Uh, it's one of those things that kind of uh, creeps up at you. And um, uh, I wanted to start with um, uh, what the, how the dictionary defines uh, what burnout is, um, which is which I've lost somewhere. Excuse me. Uh, there are obviously very, slightly different variations, but this one I like. It, it's burnout is defined as psychological exhaustion and diminished efficiency brought about by unrelieved work stress. So it's it's got nothing to do with um, you know, how much work you're doing and so on. It's all about your responses to what's happening. So it's got nothing. To, it's it's not them who are giving you stress. It's you who are turning what happens into stress. Um, I, I, that's quite a fundamental um, shift in, in realization. Because once you can, once you can stop blaming them, then which you can't deal with, you can't influence, and you can't change. But once you start realizing actually it's something that you can deal with, then that, I think that's that's quite an important um, first s step. Um, So, um, it's, it's a very important uh, issue for, uh, particularly for activists, uh, environmental activists, all kinds of activists, because there is this um, sense of burning mission that we have, that we, we see the challenges, the issues, the problems in the world, and we feel motivated, something has inspired us to but we need to do something about it. And um, the, the, the danger is that we, uh, we go from being inspired to do something to taking, uh, feeling that we have to take complete responsibility, otherwise this will get worse and so on, unless I do it. So we, we, we have no, no escape route for that. And the thing is that when we start doing something, it's enjoyable. Because actually, to become, uh, to be an activist, to work on behalf of the suffering of others, to work for healing others, to repairing others, is a great privilege, a great honour, and we need to remember that when we're doing it. So we're not, um, we're doing it um, for its own value and for its own connection with life. Um, and to let go of the um, sense of saving the world um, and I'm doing something to you. We need to re recognize our own, our own motivation in what we're doing. Uh, because the problems in the world are too vast for us to, uh, to take on, you know, take charge of and to, and to fix all of them. All, of, all that we can do is fix, is, is fix our own. And um, so it's very important, as I said, this is very it's important work that we do. And so it um, really is absolutely not required that you burn out. It's, it's really a sign that, you, that, that not only that you are getting it wrong, but that your group is getting it wrong. And we'll talk a bit more about that um, later on. Because um, it's, it's also important to realize as a group, that if you recognise to see the signs of burnout in somebody else in your team or that you're working with, it's also your responsibility. Just in the same way as if um, you know, one cell in your body is uh, causing you pain, it's not just that cell's problem. It's the whole body has that has a, has a problem, and so the whole group needs to engage in that to realise there's something dysfunctional about the group that is causing that um, um, person to, uh, to go into, into suffering mode. Um, I wanted to start by, by reading um, uh, a letter to um, an activist. I don't know if any of, it, any of you have heard of this before. It was written by a chap called Tuka Gombog. Anyone read that before? Uh, he was a Canadian activist and um, he was very, very well known in Canada. And um, if you want to find it afterwards, you can just search for Letter to an Activist. Um, and uh, it, I think it pretty much comes up. 
he, he wrote this letter as an exercise um, for his uh, therapist. And um, I think it, it provides a sort of platform for some of the things that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about afterwards. Can I just ask a question before you really follow? Are you, are you going to talk about what to do about burnout once it's happened? How to heal it? Did you get to that first? Um, I'm, I'm going to more talk about. Uh, a little bit about it. Yeah. I've got a few tips and things on that. Exactly. Yes. That's what I thought the talk would be on. It's uh -huh. about avoiding burnout. Avoiding burnout. Yes. I, I, I might leave the I'm not. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk all the time about about what burnout is. No. Um, but I think it's important in in doing that that we have um, that we explore a bit, recognizing the signs. Yeah. That's that's really what I want to start with, recognizing the signs. Because recognising something is the first okay. step to be able to do something about okay. it. I thought it was more healing, herbal and things like that. No, no, no. 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 It's more recognising yeah. what the, what, how burnout comes up in a group yeah. okay. and, um, and how as, a, as an individual and as a group can respond to it. So no, it's okay. not healing herbs. Um, or I'll, like I'll miss this one. Just come okay, yeah, you're welcome. That's fine. So, letter to an activist. Dear activist, it's another strange day for me. Things have been strange for eight months or more. I used to be an activist. Now, I don't know what I am. Did you ever read the Kafka st story about the guy who wakes up and he has turned into a cockroach? His m my mind is in a fog. I can't think very clearly. Making a sandwich takes a long time. I have to concentrate on every step along the way, and I'm moving very slowly and deliberately. I feel like I'm stunned and spaced out most of the time. Today's Earth Day, but I feel I'm on another planet. I've been spending a lot of time in bed, mostly sleeping, dozing and dreaming. It feels like my mind has melted down, though I'm told that it comes one back once the depression lifts, whenever that is. For some people, it seems to be months, for others years, and others never get out of it. But I'm writing to you about activism, not the frightening impacts of depression. I lived, breathed, and focused on activism. It kept me inspired, interested, and alive. But it also allowed me to ignore other things in life that now, suddenly, I realized I never developed. This makes me sad and despondent. I used to enjoy cooking but stopped. I was like kids, but never really thought about having kids of my own. Changing the world was more important, and having a kid would interfere with our life's work of changing the world. I didn't develop my mind in a broad way, learning about music and art and theatre and poetry, for example. It was focused on changing the world. Never really thought about a career. I was living my life, not worrying about the trappings and credentials of the boring status quo world. Maybe I was living in a bubble of naivety, doing my own thing, unconcerned that my perspectives and actions were so different from normal. I never wanted to be normal anyway. Normal got us into the mess we're in. Maybe it was the tear gas or the passport burning or 20 years of pushing against the juggernaut. Maybe September the 11th confirmed my fears that working for change was really dangerous. Or it could be a physiological response to too much coffee and stress. Maybe my brain is poisoned from so much thinking about tragic ecological issues, pondering bad air and getting frustrated at the slow rate of improvement and the rapid destruction of the world. I should have developed a deeper kinship with my family and with people. Don't get me wrong, I had a lot of friends and acquaintances in the activist world, but they were not deep friends of the heart. I neglected my heart and how I was feeling about things, about people, about situations. Now that I'm in crisis, I don't really have the language to connect with people. The silence is easier than trying to explain what I'm going through or to relate it to other people's issues or problems. So what advice can I offer? Stay rounded, do the activism, but don't overdo it. If you burn out or tumble into depression, it will become no good to anyone, especially yourself. When you're in this state, Nothing seems worthwhile, and there's nothing to look forward to. It's honourable work to change the world, 
but do it in balance with other things. Explore and embrace the things that you love to do, and you'll be energetic and enthusiastic about the activism. Don't drop the hobbies or enjoyments. Be sure to hike and dance and sing. Keeping your spirit alive and healthy is fundamental if you are to keep going. I never really understood what burnout was. I knew that it affected active people, but somehow I thought I was immune to it. After all, I took breaks every now and then and went travelling and all my work was done in partnership and with great love. But in the end, when burnout finally caught up with me, it was mega and must have been the accumulation of decades of stress and avoidance. And now I find myself in a dark and confusing labyrinth trying to feed my way back to sanity and calm. So beware, take this warning seriously. If you start slipping into the hole of depression and you notice yourself losing enthusiasm and becoming deeply disenchanted, take a break, talk about it with a friend. Don't ignore it. The world needs all the concerned people it can get. If you can stay in the struggle for the long haul, you can make a real positive contribution and live to witness the next victory. And I'm sorry to say, but uh, he did not survive, and um, a, a year or so after writing that letter, he actually committed suicide. So as he says, you know, heed the warning, you know, this is serious stuff. But also his last, uh, in his last paragraph there, you know, we need all, the world needs all the concerned people it can get. It does not need you to burn out. So it, it's really not, uh, it, it's exactly not part of the program. So how many, how many people here have um, personal experience that feel that they have burnt out at some point? More than half, yeah. So what, what are some of the experiences, what are just one or two of the things that, that you found, what happened as you're going into it? Just energy depletion. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't do the normal stuff I normally do. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Paranoia. Paranoia. Just about all sorts of things, yeah. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you, but... Yeah, yeah. Things, things getting out of proportion, yeah. yeah. So loss of loss of feeling loss of your power in a way. It's not not happening anymore. Yeah. 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 Say from it. Do well, you from whatever it is that you're 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 bound up with, it might the, 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 the activist work, whatever the work yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm completely unable to separate myself from it. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't do think I'm completely unable to separate myself from it. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, exactly, and I think that's that's what he so eloquently put in that uh, in that letter. Um, that, um, you know, on, on our own, we're not going to fix all the things that need to be done, and I think it's a you know, part of the trick is a recognition of, of the limitation of our own abilities, is, is one thing. And, and the, actually, we only have to do what we can do. That's all that's required of us. We don't have to do more. And that actually going to burnout is, is so damaging to the things that we want to, to help anyway. Uh, that's, that's the thing. So the, other, the other thing is really looking at it from a, from a systems point of view to understand how, because what, I think the feelings that come, and I think we're hearing some of the things there, is a feeling of isolation, of separation. So, so when we feel connected, we feel, when we feel rested, 
you feel connected to a whole web of matrix of different things that are going on. But as we feel tired and stressed, then our whole sense becomes much, much smaller. And, you know, it's just that simple difference between when you wake up in the morning and you feel refreshed, and then everything seems to go easily, and the days when you sleep badly in the night, and you wake up in the morning and everything seems to be against you, and the bus goes just before you get there, and when you get in, it's grumpy, and you know, the whole thing, everything seems to conspire against you. So, bad guy, boy. down into more detail, the way that the image is made up is made up of lots and lots of dots, completely separate dots. And, and that's, I think, is a, a very good illustration of how all of the dots add up together to make the picture. So that's why I say we only have to do our bit, uh, because life is, is not disconnected. If we do our bit, and we do it well, we do it to our limitations, and we follow our passion, then actually then it all adds up. We ask around the room here, now, what everybody's passion was, it would be something different. You know, to make the list, you know, somebody else had made a list where we need people who do all of these things, and then we compare the list afterwards, we'd find probably they were pretty much the same. And somehow it even worked out without having to allocate all the passions. So I think that's a kind of, you know, it's a relief. It's a let go. We don't have to, we don't have to do it all. We only have to do our bit. That's, that's the important thing. Um, and the, this systems view of the world. Uh, how many of you have heard of the work of, uh, of Joanna Macy? Yeah. I was on a, a course with uh, Joanna Macy uh, a couple of years ago, and um, I was giving a, a workshop um, about avoiding burnout, uh, not long after. So I thought, this is great. I'll, um, I'll get some tips and I'll sit down with her and, and get some really good ideas and so on. So I, I collared her and um, so I told her, you know, can you give me a few pointers? And she just said, all of my work is about avoiding burnout. Uh, okay, so the course was over a few days, so I thought it doesn't really help. <laughs> I approached her again and said, no, 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 <laughs> everything is all about avoiding burnout. So this whole idea of, of this work that reconnects is, is really around, that she has, it is around a spiral. And the spiral of, of her work starts with gratitude. And the thing about starting from gratitude yeah. is that it, it, it inoculates you from a sense of want, a sense of lack that the industrial growth society you know, engenders in us. But, you know, I want bag 1.2 and you know, all the other things that we want, the more of, the better of, the latest of, and, and, and all those things. So if we, if we start to see things from a point of view of gratitude, to see that actually the things that come actually are the things that we need. We could see it completely the other way around if we, if we choose to. It's completely our own choice. That everything, you know, is, is completely wrong for me. You know, there is a story, I don't know if you know this, the story of a man who uh, lived in a village and he had a horse and he had a son. And one day the horse ran off and uh, the villagers came to him and said, oh, what a terrible thing. Your horse, your only horse has run away. And he said, I don't know, good news, bad news, who knows? And a few days later, the horse came back but with another horse. And the villagers go, oh, lucky you are, now you have two horses. He said, I don't know, good news, bad news, who knows? So his son set about to tame this wild horse and was thrown off the horse and uh, broke his leg. Of course, the villagers go, try your only son. What will you do? Now he can't walk, he's broken his leg. He says, I don't know. The next day the army came through the village, lined up all the young men, marched them off to war 
except for his son who couldn't go because he had a, a broken leg. And so the story goes on. But you see how the, the point that we don't know when things happen, whether they're good or bad and so on. But once we have a sense of connection to life and we see that actually life is bringing us to us what we need. You know, as the Rolling Stones song says, you don't always get what you want, you get what you need. Uh, then we have that point of gratitude to say, oh, okay, I didn't know I needed that, but it seems that I do. Uh, and then we, that it inoculates us from uh, so many things to really, uh, because it, remember what we said about the definition of stress is that it's the unrelieved stress. It's the stress that we create ourselves, it's our responses that, that creates that stress, not the things that happen to you, it's how we, we, uh, how we respond to it. So, um, there are, uh, well, actually I've got a few here which I will give out, I've got a few um, tips, I seem to have got a few things. Uh, if you had it, I can, I can give it. The, so gratitude really extends to uh, to what comes to you. Uh, it extends to the people around you in the sense of appreciation for what other people do for you. Um, uh, appreciation of when they make mistakes as well. You know, make new mistakes. Don't you know? It's not, a, not a, nothing wrong with making mistakes. Things not going right. Things go right in different ways. Um, appreciation is a very important thing, it's very important for a group culture to appreciate what each other does and so on. We all like to feel appreciated and that can be quite simple little things that just make that magic happen. Mm. And, and it can be a, a, a celebration of the things that didn't work so well as well, even you know, as a group. It's very important to take time in the program to celebrate successes of projects and projects that didn't go so well as well because they're part of the learning process you know, and they're part of a, appreciating each other you know we did all of this and the outcome it's you know it's not necessarily even to not even see it as failure the outcome that we anticipated didn't happen but we don't know the effect of what we do we don't know the effect on ourselves we don't know the effect on the people around us, we don't know the people remote to us. Uh, we really have no idea because life is much more complex than you realise. The influence is, extends uh, way out. Another very important thing is about learning to let go and that, that includes learning to say no. Um, <laughs> say, <laughs> let's try that all together. No! no. 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 <laughs> It feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> you know? um, it's such a, a, a simple thing, but it's so easy to think, you know, if I don't do it, you know, it won't get done, and then this will be the effect, and so on. Um, so, the other thing is about, and uh, there's this lovely debate, and I heard it here, you know, something, oh, I'm a man, I can only do one thing at a time, and so on. And, you know, actually, the way that our senses work, is actually only one at a time. The whole system, it, it happens, you know, I'm tasting and seeing and hearing and so on, but actually what's happening inside, it's switching from one to the other very fast and so on. So one of the surest way of getting burnout is multitasking. And um, it's, you know, that time, as you say, you don't know which one to turn to and so on. You know, you're kind of starting a bit of one and then at the end of the day, you think, oh God, what did I do? You know, I had, Ten different things on the go, and actually, oh, no, none of them really got done. And you're sitting there, and you're starting one, and you think, oh, crap, I better check the email, and then, oh, and then, you know, and then, and then, and then, and then. So, you know, very simple things like having a to-do list for the day, and, and and deciding what you're going to do. Now, there is a theory about to-do lists that I, I don't really agree with. They, the theory of to-do lists, I think, in general, is that you start with the most important things at the top. I don't agree with that. I, I say start with the one that you feel most attracted to do. It might be the really easy one. It might be, you know, doing the washing up or, you know, something really, really simple. And, and start with that one. Start with the one that you feel most attracted to. In fact, look at the list and say, okay, not the, not the most important one. What, what one do I feel most attracted to? Because the other important thing about a list is that you have 
And then, that's the bad thing about having lists in laptops or computers and things, you can't cross them off. Really important, cross, cross it off. And even if you suddenly find, oh, I did that thing, put it on the list and cross it off. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Silly, but it, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, wow, yeah, I did, I did those things. Those things have been done. I can let go of them. And the other thing is, it's you know, have a notepad and paper beside your bed. Not, not because you're going to do work in bed, because the other thing that happens is if you've forgotten things, as you're going to sleep, the sleep is so important. You need to be well rested. You know, you're lying in bed and you're thinking, oh, I didn't do that thing. Oh, you must remember to do that in the morning. Oh, I didn't do that thing, you know, it keeps coming back and, and bugging you and keeping you, oh, and that other thing, oh, I must remember to do that other thing, and so on. So just, you know, write it down quickly. That's it, gone, let go. And the other, oh, and the, and the other thing. Oh, and, the, and you'll find that probably two or three or four things will just come tumbling out, oh, job, job, just write them down, that's it. And you can let go, because they'll be there in the morning. It's, it makes such a difference doing that. And then you can write your, your list in, in the morning. But it's the multitasking that's really the... It's the, it's the it's a sign, but it's also the the, the, the lead into um, uh, into it. Um, so the other thing, uh, as as I said, is about the group. It's, it's very important to look at the group. The, the culture that you're working, the people that you're working with, or whatever the project is, uh, that's so that it's it's a group responsibility. That, that, that's such important to have that sense of um, uh, of connection. And I think you know I just wanted to look. At, uh, we talked about coming from uh, gratitude. Um, Simple things like just, you know, for actually one of the things that I suggested to, to Dan here at this festival was to have an opening ceremony that we had yesterday. You know, hadn't, hadn't been having one before. It just marks a beginning, just to have a, a beginning. It might be even in, in the group, you know, obviously we're all working in different kind of circumstances and so on. But it might be having a check-in session. You know, it might be 10 minutes or something. Just for everybody to check in. How are we feeling today? How are we doing? Very simple thing. Um, one of this, you know, did you see a great film last night or go out with some friends? You know, checking in with the successes, the human elements as well. Small thing, but it just, what it does, it connects you beyond the project that you're doing into as human beings. As, as, uh, and, and actually that word human beings is quite interesting. We're human beings, we're not human doings. So it's more about what we are than about what we do. It's more about what we are than what we do. So human beings, not human doings. And so even a, a simple thing in the um, in that gathering together, so having a moment of silence, is so powerful. Because it just lets our, our, um, our focus and our attention going from right outside to really settling down. And, and the more the more that um, more settled we are in our awareness, then the more comprehensive it is. You know, if, if you if you go to somebody who's really busy and uh, and so on, they they really they're not able to take in new information for the things. They can really only focus on that one thing. But when somebody feels calm and rested, you can say, oh yes, there's this thing going on here, this thing here, this thing here. In that calmness, you can become more comprehensive and include more things. Uh, and act more from in here rather than in from, from in here. And that's that's very important to become more inner interconnected so that we act we act from there. Um, because it's the element of heart that has motivated us in the first place. It's the heart that has inspired us to see some area of life that needs some attention which is really what it is. It's an area of life that we feel deserves our attention, that we feel moved, we feel connected to. Because the way that life is at the moment with, with television and the media and so on is that we are confronted, you know, we become very externalised in, in our relationships. So we become confronted with uh, things that are happening in faraway places. You know, if we were sitting here and um, 
can't see who it is, but anyway, whoever's using the axe over there, you know, if they made some horrible mistake and made some axe cut into themselves, and there, was no, and there he was lying there with this axe sticking out of him, you know, we would abandon the workshop and rush over there and, and help him. It would, you know, it would be cruel if we were to just sit here, see him lying, where we've got 20 minutes left on the workshop, and see him lying in a pool of blood. We couldn't do it. We would not, you know, we would all find different ways to go and help and, and so on. And yet, when we're at home, we'll read the newspaper or the television and so on. We see things like that on the television. In remote places around the world, we see these distresses and so on. And now the sport. And now weather. You know, we move and so we, we feel that thing and we're not able to really respond to it. Now, I think the thing is that if we understand life as a, as a connected thing, as a quantum mechanical universe, a connected universe, not a separate universe, as a universe that is actually intimately connected to each other, we only have to do our bit. If we're doing our bit in the, in the web of life, the connected matrix of life, in a, in, a, in a way that is also helping whatever that other situation is. We are doing our bit. We don't have to do it all. We only have to do our bit. You know, if we feel moved to help that, Thing, you know, people in my village who, when there's a disaster, they're is involved in uh, helping lay out the geography of the place and mapping and all those kind of things. That's, you know, that's that's his thing. But you know, I don't have to go and do something else at that. You know, that's his that's his role. We all have our own roles. So when you see those things, it's important to all of those news so here's here's the uh, the, the, the technique the, the, the thing I want to take you through which is an exercise from um, Joanna Macy which is called breathing through so I think we'll we'll, we'll go through this exercise and uh, together because it's about um, really experiencing the interconnect our interconnectedness and the uh, the flow of life uh, that, that, that that there is because if we if we block that sense of connectedness, that's when the energy gets stuck and uh, stuck with us. And if we feel connected to a, a larger web of life, then we build up resilience and strength and, and power and, um, and connectedness. Um, so this exercise is called breathing through. So if we just sit and just close our eyes, and this is something that you can do in all sorts of uh, circumstances with all sorts of news as it comes uh, and so on some some big news comes you can uh, just sit and, um, and do this thing so just let your attention go onto your uh, onto your breathing Not trying to breathe in any uh, any special way, slow or long or anything. Just noticing that you are breathing. In and out. Just watching it. Just noticing. Notice the sensations in the, in your nostrils, maybe in your in your lips chest, your abdomen as it moves up and down, not doing anything, just being, saying, just quietly passive and alert, like a, a cat sitting outside a mouse hole, just watching your breathing. And the thing is that what we notice is that the breathing happens all by itself. We don't need to do anything without your will, or deciding each time whether to breathe in or out. It's all just happening automatically. Sleeping would be a problem if it wasn't. It's really as though one could say that one is being breathed, being breathed by life. They're all being breathed, all of us here, everyone in this festival, everything alive on the planet is just breathing, being sustained in a, a great vast web 
the breathing web of life. Now visualize this stream of breath or a ribbon of air passing through you. Feel it flowing, see it flowing up through your nose, down through your windpipe, into your lungs, and then from your lungs take it into, through your heart, flowing through your heart and opening out, flowing out into life, reconnecting with a larger web of life. So the, the breath from life being breathed in, flowing through and out through your heart, back out into the reconnecting with the web of life. One whole web of connection of life. Yeah. And now for just a, a few moments, just open your awareness to the suffering there is in the world. You don't have to, you don't have to try for any particular suffering, it may be your own suffering, personal suffering, but all different areas become concretely to you. Images of fellow beings in pain, in need, in fear, in prisons, without enough food or water. You don't need to try for these images, they bubble up in us very easily. Just by virtue of our inter-existence, our interconnectedness, this is present there. Just let them come to the surface of vast, countless hardships of our fellow humans and brothers. Swimming in the seas, flying in the skies. Breathe this pain in like dark granules on the stream of air. So they're flowing in to you and flowing into your heart and out again. You're not doing anything. You're just watching these granules of pain flowing in through your breath, being transformed into your heart. Not holding, into, not holding on to them at all. Surrendering your activity to the vast web of life, to the healing resources of the web of life. just your own personal suffering, your own anguish, that's also an integral part of the world. If you feel pressure in your chest, your heart is not an object that can break. And they say that a heart that breaks open can enfold the whole universe, because your heart is that large. Just trust it. Just keep breathing, breathing through. simple technique is something that you can use really in any any situation where you have bad news comes, disturbing news that comes. You should just reconnect. Just reconnect to the vast web of life and let it flow, flow through you. As we said at the beginning, that burnout is about unrelieved stress. So it's the same when you have news like that that comes, disturbing news that comes. It's when you hold on to it that becomes the problem. It's not about 
not caring and so on. It's about using your own heart, your own healing, inner healing, to heal and to, uh, to, to honour that healing. Because a lot of the, uh, the burnout, the stress, comes from actually ignoring it. From, from, from just not, you know, we, we, we don't commonly discuss with each other the, the stress that we feel, the, the upset that we feel about the pain that's being inflicted on others, on the planet and so on. And so it just burns away in there, unrecognized and unacknowledged and so on. So it's a very simple way and it can also save us from self-righteousness. This is a very important thing for, for an activist. This is a real trap to become self-righteous about it. Helps to restore humility uh, as well. Um, so I, I want to end with, uh, and then um, just a few minutes. I want to end with a, um, uh, with a poem, and then if you have any other feedback after that, um, this is a poem called. Um, a Thousand Years of Healing by Sue Silver Marie. Does anybody know that? This poem? Uh, Sue Silver Marie, she's an American poet. You know her? I know. Oh, lovely. Great. So, it's called A Thousand Years of Healing. It says, With this turning age, we put a broken age to rest. We who are alive at such a cusp now usher in a thousand years of healing. From whence my hope I cannot say, but it grows in the cells of my skin, my envelope of mysteries. In this sheath so akin to the surface of the earth, I sense the faint song. Beneath the wail and dissonance, this singing rises. Winged ones and four-legged, grasses and mountains and each tree, all the swimming creatures, even we wary two-legged, hum and call and create the changes. We remake our relations, mend our minds, convert our minds to the earth. We practice blending our voices, living with the vision of the great magic we move within. We begin the new habit, habit getting up glad for a thousand years of war. Oh, I feel quite emotional. <laughs> so I hope there's a few uh, there's a few tips and a few insights there about recording burnout. I think that the, the important one is that it's about relationships and that it's not required. It's, <laughs> it's not required. It's, it's it's absolutely not required. That's that's the important thing to know. And that it's a collective responsibility. That's the other thing. It's, if it's happening in a group, it's everybody's responsibility. There's a, there's a problem in the dynamics of the whole group. That's, uh, that's the other thing. You know, it's not, if somebody's having burnout, it's not for the group to say, oh, you know, take some time off, take a week off or something. No, 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 no. There's something wrong in the whole, the whole group. And we're in this together. We need to do this together. The whole thing is together. And it's, the, it, it's to get in togetherness that strength comes. So any other thoughts, anything else I've missed, anyone wants to share? There's a, there's a really good book called uh, A Coach as well, it's called The Human Givens Approach. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's, um, I went to some training a few years ago by this guy. Um, basically, it was a lot of it, it was a lot of it was about depression, but also mental well-being. Uh -huh. And they talk a lot about um, there's these certain, every human has these things they call the human givens. That every, to, to, to be immensely well and healthy yep. person, you have to have certain relationships and a sense of you know, doing something in the world and all these sort of things. But what was really, what I found really interesting was that they they done a lot of research into sleep, uh -huh. and they were saying that if you don't get uh, people who get real serious depression, yep, yep. if you don't get, uh, if you go to bed feeling really anxious, yep. what happens is when you when you dream, is that you're you're dreaming. Sort of like all the anxiety from the day, uh -huh. but what happens when you get when you get more anxious is that you you don't enter into what they call long wave sleep. Yep. So you remain in uh, what they call REM sleep. Yep. 
And what happens is you wake up the next day oh, okay. feeling completely exhausted yeah. and it starts a real cycle of yeah. downward yeah. Uh, things. And I just think like if, if you're having a really, if you're really in, under a lot of stress in terms of doing that to this level or whatever, to yeah. be honest, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. The this, this, this sleep is so crucial. But if, if you notice you're not getting proper sleep, you need to really sort of work on reducing that anxiety through, through the day. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, you will find that you're the, the spoil. And they, and they documented it. And it, one of the first things now that they do is in their approach is to get people to look at reduce just reduce anxiety because then they sleep properly and then st starts to ease because the brain the brain because effectively the brain's just getting exhausted. Yep. Constantly exhausted. I, I used to run uh, software development projects and um, programmers are notorious mm. for working into their hours. But what I realised was actually they weren't working any more hours than anybody else, you know, because they were working sort of through the night and then and then they wouldn't surface until sort of <laughs> eight hours had gone of their sleep. And it, so it, it actually became less and less productive. Uh, and so on. So if you see people who are sending you emails at that time of the night, yeah. you know, hello. <laughs> They're not getting sleep. <laughs> no, you know.